So let's have a little chat, shall we? Let's have one of our little occult chats, shall we? <laughs> this is the Occult View, joining you today on this wonderful, wonderful cold day here in the Metro DC area. Child, let me tell y'all what the fuck has been going on. So, um, I've had some family shit that's been going on and popping off. And when I tell you, I, I, there's no other way to put it. I am that, I'm the motherfucking, listen, and I'm not trying to be egotistical, but I have to be in this, in this instance. I am the, I'm that motherfucking nigga. I have to give myself a pat on the motherfucking back, a pat on the motherfucking arm. I have to give myself uh, 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 so many accolades. I don't need them from anyone else. I have to give it to myself. See, sometimes we forget to give ourselves accolades. And, you know, you don't do that and hold it over people to say, oh, Nina, Nina, I'm better than you. That's not where it's coming from. But y'all, this past week, I discovered some things that just left me go, that just left me in a mental state of really, okay, maybe, could be. This is what I'm talking about right here. I'm, a, I'm, I'm going to peel back the layers and just delve, you know, just dive delve right into the meat and the potatoes and hopefully I can do this video without my husband coming back home and interrupting me because whenever he comes in the house he wants to talk you know and plus I have to go make um, some dinner for us in a couple of minutes because y'all know I'm a damn good cook that's why I can't get rid of him <laughs> so My uncle's ex-wife passed away recently. And, you know, she was someone that watched me grow up. And, you know, I was very uh, close with her. Okay? And we're going to call her... Jane. We're going to call her Jane. And Jane died... Well, first off, she had a stroke many years ago. And she never recovered. She was basically just living. I mean, I'm sorry, existing. Not living, just existing. And that was not who she was. She was an active, vibrant, successful black woman who worked, um, who worked. She had a, um, a successful career as a legal secretary for high level government officials. And Jane was absolutely, we're going to call her Jane. Jane was absolutely, she was like an aunt, mother, and everything else to me. Even when we didn't disagree and had disagreements and didn't speak sometimes, you know, she was absolutely like a mother figure to me, you know. She was a cancer. And I typically, I typically get along with cancers you know, if they're not, you know, if they're, if they're stable cancers and she was a stable one. Okay. So she passed away after many years of, you know, suffering. And I have to say, I have to give credit to her son, her son, my cousin, he really took care of his mother. And as much as I talk about black men, got to give credit where credit is due. He took care of his mother. And that is because she raised him to be a loving, compassionate, responsible person. No, he's not perfect. None of us are. But he took care of his mother for the past 14 or 15 years. Okay? He took care of her. He stayed with her. He made sure she was okay right up until the very end. He took care of his mother 
and I have to give credit where credit is due. Because one thing about some of the, the black men in my bloodline, one thing about it, they do, they, they may not, we may not treat each other right, but they do treat their mothers right. I will give them that much. Now his father, that was another story because I've talked about him. This, let me just, it, it, it was just so overwhelming. So she passed away. In December, actually, she passed away in December. But you know, because of COVID, a lot of these um, funeral homes are backed up. So we had her services last week. And I went in looking like a million bucks because I had my um, suit tailored specifically for me. And I was not going to walk in there looking like a ragamuffin, okay? I was going to look good. I was looking good. My husband, he took me shopping, um, helped me pick out what I needed to pick out for myself. He was absolutely a godsend because I could not go to Jane's funeral looking any kind of way for, for her to come back and, and cuss my ass out. Hell to the motherfucker. No. So here's where it gets a little tricky. I found out that some of my relatives that I don't really, that I hadn't really spoken with and that I didn't really vibe with because we had disagreements, specifically my aunt, the one that I've spoken about on my channel before, y'all know who I'm talking about, my aunt, who I've had a contentious relationship with when I lived with her. Y'all know who I'm talking about. And I said she was abusive towards me, which she was when, when I lived with her, she was. I haven't spoke to her since 2014 when we fell out. Haven't seen her since 2014. So before the funeral, they knew that I was coming. And I had to be there because I was part of, of the service. Okay, because I was one of the pallbearers. Yeah, I did. I was one of the pallbearers. I was. And I had all of these thoughts going through my mind. Oh, I'm not going to speak to her. I'm not going to say anything to her. You know, I'm not going to speak to my uncle because remember I talked about my uncle too and his drug addiction and he, how he was abusive towards me. That's the uncle who was the ex-husband of Jane and the father of my cousin, the one I just told you that took care of his mother, Jane. That's the uncle. I said, the universe always gets its motherfucking way. And if you want to get a little bit more deeper, how can I put this? Not um, the grand design always gets its motherfucking way. But you know, I am the grand design. So when I take a step back, and I really examined what really happened. I put these series of events in place and didn't even fucking realize it until now. All of the healing work that I have been doing, all of the justice work that I have been doing, I'm talking about the spiritual dark work that I've been doing for self. All the work that I've been doing to combat, send back, reverse. When I went to Jane's funeral and I saw my family, the three relatives, my aunt, my uncle, and my aunt's husband. When I saw them and how they reacted towards me, I knew my spell work had worked. I knew that my energy worked had worked. I knew that my inner work had worked. And you notice I gave you several options, multiple choice. 
for whichever one resonates with you. Spell work, energy work, inner work, interversal work. So when I walked into the sanctuary, I, I walked in there, sunglasses, suited up, looking motherfucking good, because I had on a very, I ain't going to lie, I had on a very expensive Italian suit, okay? A black Italian suit, looking motherfucking good, because I was looking fabulous! Fabulous! I walked in there looking fabulous, suited down. Although I was uncomfortable because I'm not a suit person. You know, I'm a jeans and t-shirt person. But I know how to dress when I need to. Stacy Adams shoes. I was looking good. I walked into the sanctuary. Had on sunglasses. I looked over to my right. And I saw my aunt. The one that I've spoken about on my channel, the one that I did I really did not vibe with for many years, and I saw her husband. Spirit, my spirit said, see her, go over there and greet your aunt and give her a hug. And put your arms around her. And go hug her husband as well. These are people. That, that abused me when I was a child. Verbally, physically, this, this is what people did. This is what happened. These are people that I've had a contentious relationship with. So I went over and I said, hello, aunt, aunt. Y'all know her name. I said, hello. I said, how are you? And you know, by being my, by my, by Jane, the deceased, Jane, the deceased, the one who is resting, not resting, the one who is in power now. She's no longer in the physical. She's no longer restricted by the constraints of physical, of a physical body. I forgot where I was going. That's how you know when spirit coming through. But anyway, so I went and I hugged my aunt and I went and hugged her husband who was sitting next to her. And then I went to the casket and I looked at Jane. And, you know, then I came. She looked very peaceful. Um, I could tell that she had been through some things over the years because I had not seen Jane in many years because you know when people are sick they want dignity they don't want to be bothered she couldn't talk because she had a stroke so she could not talk so after I viewed the body I went and sat next to my aunt and her husband now these are the people that that, that I've spoke about in multiple videos and my aunt was so ecstatic that I was there talking to her. Her husband was too. They were so glad to see me. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm, I'm going to call her in a few minutes. Then my uncle comes in, who used to abuse me as a child, physical, of course. I gave him a hug too. See, he used to be on drugs really bad, but he's not anymore. He was married to Jane. And I remember growing up, going to their, this was before he pre, pre-crack, pre-drugs. I remember going to their home. They used to live not that far from where I live at now. That was many years ago in the 1980s. He came in, gave me a hug. He was so glad to see me. I gave him a hug. There was no malice or anything. And I know what some people may think, but Seer, they did X, Y, and Z to you. That's true. They did. But what people don't understand is that 
That was then. This is my reality now. And in my reality, I call the motherfucking shots. I don't think y'all heard me. I call the shots in my reality. See, I didn't know my personal power then. But if I didn't know it then, and if I didn't know it afterwards, God damn it, at that motherfucking funeral, I definitely got confirmation of my own personal power. Because see, sometimes what will happen is that the people that have hurt you the most will be the same people as the Christians would say, God maketh a table. I may be saying it wrong. God prepares a feast. I'm going to say it in my own words, in the presence of my enemies. And when they saw me walk in, after we had conversations after the services, my aunt and her husband told me, they said, Seer, you look so much happier. You look so happy. And I had to catch my aunt up on a lot of stuff. I had to tell her about what went on between me and Christopher Barry. I had to, because she did, she wasn't in my life at that time because we hadn't been talking. I told her that I have a, 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 a boyfriend, a husband that lives with me, who loves me, who treats me good. You know? And she said, you just look so happy. Because I've been doing work all of this time. And all of the work that I've been doing has led up to this point. See, you're going to eventually have to face those people again. And when you do face them, you don't face them in hatred. You don't face them in fear. You face them in love because it's your reality. And that is what I learned. My aunt's husband said, who we're going to call Bernard, Bernard said, you know, I thought you were going to walk over to the other side of the sanctuary and not even speak to us. And I told him, I said, no, I was not going to walk into that sanctuary and be nasty and not speak to my aunt. Number one, I was raised right. No matter what. She's still my elder and she deserves a certain amount of respect because she has been nice to me in some ways. Yeah, she she was abusive towards me in some ways, but I look at those as lessons and blessings in disguise because that abuse taught me not to be like them. And this ain't no shade or no or, or knocking them, but it taught me how not to be. Same thing with my uncle with his drug addiction. Most of my aunts and uncles were on drugs, including my own mother. Now that particular aunt, she wasn't really on drugs like that. But most of my aunts and uncles, they were victims of the crack era here in the D.C. area. And that taught me enough not to do, because people be like, you don't smoke weed, you don't drink. You know why I don't smoke weed and drink? Because I have, I, I've seen what drugs have done to relatives in my fucking family. It is a predestined, it's a predisposition that has been embedded in me from the God or the energy that resides within me. And when I say God, I'm talking about the God that's speaking through me right now. It is a predisposition or disposition that is predestined in me not to go down the same tragic, destructive paths of behaviors that my relatives did. That is why I don't drink no motherfucking liquor. That is why, because I've had I have alcoholics in my family. My father was on crack. I found out because I didn't know my father. He was on crack. My mother was on crack at one point. Both uh, two of my aunts were on crack. One of them she still is. Two of my uncles were on crack, 
And I was raised around that. So I have a predisposition or a, I have something within me that says you don't need to do anything. Now, I did, I did experiment with marijuana and stuff when I was a child, when I was a teenager, but that was only experimentation. So all of the shit that I went through, it was a major lesson. See, I think, I think of lessons as a map. You go here to get to here. You go there to get to over there. So the abuse and everything that I went through, that was making me into the strong, powerful, spiritual warrior that I am now. That's why when people have tried to tear me down, even so-called spiritual teachers that I looked up to, when they try to tear you down and mistreat you and dismiss you and throw you away, can't nothing that God, and I'm talking about the God in me. I'm not talking about no God in the sky. I'm talking about the God in me, the Christ energy within me. Can't nothing. That God put forth, can't no motherfucking conscious nigga, can't no motherfucking conscious woman, can't no motherfucking body put asunder. And that goes for you all too. And yes, I'm, I'm, I'm tapping into my old time ancestral motherfucking religion. To pull out that energy because that is what's, that is what's going to get you to the next level. See, my ancestors were walking with me during that entire time at that funeral. The deceased Jane was there. See, Jane has been gone out of that body. That's what I was going to tell you all. Jane has been out of that body for a while. Her spirit was reaching out to me in the astral letting me know, look, I'm ready to check out. And this was maybe a year before she died. Her spirit separated from that body a year before she died. Now, they don't know that. But I do. Because I'm that motherfucking nigga. Okay? But whatever you go through, when you're able to face down the people and the perpetrators who've harmed you in your family, that ain't nothing but a higher, what people would call a higher power or, or what some people would like to call or refer to it as your higher self. See, I wasn't Sia Grant at that time. That was something else that took over inside of me that enabled me to look at my aunt as a woman and to see her fractures and fragments as well. See, I can see people's fractures and fragments. And when I'm able to do that, then that alleviates the pain that they've caused me. Because what I understand now, the pain that they caused me was not about me. That was about their own pain. My mother, she, she's still very bitter with her sister. And I understand that. But what my mother doesn't understand is this. Forgiveness is not for you. Forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is so that you can make your heart light as a feather. And when you close your eyes and exit this plane of existence, then you can go on to another higher realm and you won't have those heavy spiritual burdens burdening you down and dragging you back to a lower vibrating place. I don't care how much money you have because my aunt has money. And when I look at her, I don't see how it's doing her any good. And when I say any good, I'm not talking about on a physical level. I'm talking about spiritually. And again, this isn't an, an attack on her because she and I made amends. 
Now, her memory of what happened between us is totally different. And that's okay. When you get to a place where, like, like where I'm at, it doesn't even matter what caused the argument. It doesn't even matter if she has a different set of memories. It doesn't matter. So those people that are watching me, what you have to understand is this. When you know, when you are God of your life, and you have God, the God, the God that resides within you, that self-created deity, which is what you are. When you have that within you, no man or woman can put that asunder. So it doesn't matter if she doesn't acknowledge or apologize. See, that's hard for my mother and other people to, to for that concept. Apologies are nothing but words. I don't need apologies. I don't need apologies. Maybe some people do. But apologies do nothing for me. If me and a person had a disagreement and we're able to come back to each other and say, let's just squash it, we're good. That is what you do because you want to create another reality. Remember in Nightmare on Elm Street, and this was a major symbolic, um, this was something major, a major symbolism in that movie. Remember they kept telling them in, in Nightmare on Elm Street 4, they said, you're going to have to stop. No, I'll take it, I'll, no, let me take it a little further into the franchise. Remember in Freddy vs. Jason, None of the current Elm Street kids knew anything about Freddy. They had blotted him out and erased him from history. They acted like he didn't even exist. And that is what you somewhat have to do when you're doing some of this shadow work. You have to erase some of the humanity and some of the conscious egotistical shit that you hold on to so you can go to the next level. I don't mean going around being a malicious, narcissistic, egotistical bastard and going around hurting people and not making amends. Making amends and apologizing are two different things. But when you're doing a lot of this shadow work, you have to forget Sometimes, what got you to that place? Because if you keep rehashing it, it's going to open up wounds again and you're going to be stuck in that same low vibrating, low consciousness of a reality. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. This same aunt that I'm talking about, her and her husband physically assaulted me when I was 12 years old. They beat me up in the middle of the street, okay? It was a major misunderstanding, but it was also a major lesson. See, I'm a more advanced type of energy. So the lessons that I learn, they are more complex than the lessons some of you may learn. But nevertheless, her husband told me at the funeral, Bernard, he said, see her, can I talk to you for a minute? He pulled me off to the side. He started crying. He said, I don't want you to ever think that I don't love you or care about you. I said, I thought you hated me, truth be told, based upon your actions. He's a Taurus. And you know they can flip on you in a moment's notice because they're Scorpios as well. And Scorpios are kind of like scavengers, like the crab. Okay? They're not that different from the motherfucking crab. But anyway, he said, I still 
have a guilty conscience basically for putting hands on you that time and, and attacking you when you were a child. He said, I go to bed at night and I lay up in the bed with that running through my head all the time. That let me know something. When you're dealing with people who are perceived enemies, you don't have to do much of anything when you're a marked or blessed one, like I told you. See, I kept thinking that they weren't getting their just dues. That is why I'm glad I went to that funeral. Not because I take pleasure in that. It's not about that. But it, it's a learning experience. And it goes to show you that you cannot fuck. And I'm going to be Christian for a moment. You can't fuck with God's anointed. Touch my anointed not. You cannot fuck with God's people. And when I say God, I'm talking about the inner verse within you that vibrates on a higher frequency, we just don't see it because we're living a human life. Touch my anointed not. No, I'm not a Christian, but I grew up in that energy and I can pull that energy every now and then. And I was taught that by a wise woman right here on YouTube. We can still utilize that to combat certain things. That's our foundation for a lot of us. You don't touch God's anointed. So now, he has created a karmic cycles for himself that he can't get out of and it doesn't matter that he owns a, a property and and condos and stuff like that then he told me because the reason they beat me up was because i didn't want to go back home with them i i basically i because my aunt put me out over some dumb shit when i was 12 and i didn't want to go back with them I went up to my grandmother's house, my great grandmother's house. And I didn't want to go back with them. And what it really was is this. Everybody wanted me to be their child. Because I was the golden boy. I was the star child. I was the golden boy. And everybody wanted me to be their child. But you cannot break a bond between a mother and a child. I don't care what my mother did. I don't care what my mother, uh, my mother's problems were. She was still my mother. And there's a certain amount of respect and a certain amount of love that a son is always going to have for his mother. I don't care. And you cannot break that bond. My aunt and her husband they don't have any biological children with each other. Her husband has a son, and incidentally, his son has the same name as me. We, have, we both have the same government first name. He likes me more than he likes his son. He likes me more than he likes his son. So what that told me at that funeral, oh, I learned, child, I got so much tea at the fucking funeral, so much spiritual tea that let me know. See, that's why I'm glad I went. If I had not gone, I would have not gotten the confirmation and the information and the consciousness and the knowledge that I needed. When you're a marked and blessed one, you ain't got to do nothing. Thy will be done. My will, I'm talking about my will, my will be done in the presence of my enemies or perceived enemies. That man was so humble. 
her husband, and he don't humble himself to nobody. He's a nasty, ornery somebody sometimes. He could be a nasty, ornery motherfucker sometimes, child. But when it comes to me, he humbles himself. Because he's standing before greatness. No, I ain't got the money that they got. I got something better than that. I got the power of the living, most powerful force inside of me. And that is what they respect. That is why they wanted me to be their son. He has a biological son, not with my aunt. Him and my aunt don't have no children together. He has a biological son, but they don't get along. He don't like him and they don't even speak. He wanted me to be his son. And that is what this was all about. Because I did not look at my aunt and him as my parents. Because I still loved my mother and they were jealous of that. And they wanted me to hate my mother because my mother didn't raise me and my mother was out in the street with men and doing whatever she did. And even with all of that, I still loved my mother and I still do. Hell, when my mother moved, shit, me and my husband were the ones that moved her. I got a brother, but he was working at the time. My brother, he don't really do much, child. That's just how he is. Ain't no, ain't no shade towards him or nothing like that. You see how the people who are perceived enemies and those who've hurt you are used in your healing as well. So when he told me all of that, I said, oh, so you didn't hate me. You were hurt by my actions because it seemed like I was being ungrateful to you and my aunt. And y'all perceived that as being ungrateful. And I said to him, I said, I didn't even know how much I hurt my aunt. I didn't even know that. I didn't recognize that because I was a child. And the only thing that I knew is that you all were beating on me and mistreating me because they thought that I wasn't grateful to be living with them because I did ask them could I live with them? And they felt like I was being ungrateful. See, I'm not innocent either. But the one thing about me is that I will admit if I'm wrong. And I will say that I'm not innocent. Even though I was a child, I wasn't innocent. And I don't need nobody saying, oh, you know, I was not innocent. I could have done things differently too. See, that's where... The inner child starts to heal when you really do dark shadow work and you really examine self. I ain't even got to my uncle yet. Now let me get to my uncle. That's, a, that's it for my aunt. Me and her, we cool, we talk. But you would think that when I started talk, see, I'm the nucleus in my family. I'm the nucleus. When I don't speak to certain people, it fucks up and reverberates across the whole family because I am the Christ consciousness. No, now let me be clear because you know people say, oh, he got a God complex. No, a God complex is someone who wants people to look at them as God, worship them as God. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is I'm the nucleus because I am the highest level a priesthood when it comes to Christ in my family. And I don't give a fuck who got a problem with it. You can say, well, you gay, I don't care. It's, it's the truth. I was ordained. I was ordained to do this work by the motherfucking universe, my universe. Not the universe, but my universe. You cannot turn a child against their mother. I don't care if it's a single mother. I don't give a fuck all of the nasty, negative motherfucking shit that people say about black single mothers and all that and all this bullshit. But I tell you one motherfucking thing, with, within all of their dysfunction, I bet you most of their children love them because there's something within children 
that says, this is my mother and I love my mother and there's not because there's a bond there when a woman is carrying a child. And if you have not carried a child, men, you can't come in between that. If you have not carried a child, women, you can't come in between that. And my aunt, no disrespect to women that can't have children, but my aunt has never carried a child. There's a bond that develops between a mother and a child when she's carrying that child. And you cannot come between that. And I don't care what the mother does. I don't care what the provocation is. Unless you're like that crazy aunt of mine, another aunt, not the one I'm talking about, but another aunt who's just an unreasonable person. But even with that, she's a schizophrenic. And she has a mental illness. And she needs professional help. She needs to be stabilized on medications and put the crack pipe down. This is another aunt. Don't confuse it with the aunt that I made amends with. This is all about, the, the reason I'm talking about this, this is all about healing. This is the real spiritual work right here that won't nobody tell you about. That is why I'm showing you a display of my life to let you know where I've been and where I've gone and where I'm at now. Some things have to happen. Or as Ayala Van Zandt would say, you have to have breakdowns after breakdowns after breakdowns to have breakthroughs. And like I told my aunt and I told my mother, whatever goes on between my, ma my, my aunt and my mother, that has nothing to do with me. If they don't want to speak, they don't have to speak. They are sisters. I'm not getting involved in that anymore. I'm going to speak to my aunt if I want to. Because now I have clear vision. This isn't about hate. Hate is never about hate. Hate is never about not liking someone. Hatred is about pain and hurt. And that is what we're dealing with. You got to have the vision. Now, this does not mean that you have to go around forgiving people for what they did to you. That is not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is for the marked ones, the ones who know they're marked like me, which is the blessed ones. You will see how your enemies and those people you've had contentious relationships with, you will begin to see eventually how things unfold. My aunt and her husband have plenty of motherfucking money. They live in a big old house out there in the Bowie Glendale area. They own condos. They have money. They've always had money. But the one thing he doesn't have is peace of mind. He can't sleep at night thinking about me and the things he did to me when I was a child. And I'm talking about the beating of me. See, when people get older, see, I always tell, I always tell my older people this, when you're in those ages and stages of life, you start reflecting on the things you did to people. That is why it's important to try to make things right while you're still young. Like my uncle. Let me get into my uncle, who was Jane's ex-husband. After the funeral... Well, first of all, he and I, we rode down to the cemetery together because she was buried way down in the country because uh, Jane was not from D.C. She was from uh, another uh, uh, in the, the country part of Maryland. Let's just say that, child. So he and I were talking. We were catching up. Now, this is the uncle that was a crackhead that was very physically abusive towards me when I was coming up. He was nasty towards me, had a nasty attitude. We rode down to, he. it was he, my cousin, who's his son, who I'm going to call Deshaun. My cousin Deshaun, my uncle and myself, we rode in the limo down to the cemetery. And it's so interesting because... It's like things are reverting back to the way they were. 
So after we, you know, after the, 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 the cemetery ceremony, we went back to Deshaun and uh, Jane's house um, in, 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 a, in, in another part of Maryland. And my aunt, you know, the one I was just telling you about, my aunt, she had brought some food over. And she asked my uncle, she asked my uncle to go out to, to, to get the food. Now, I'm looking at him. My uncle's only 63 years old. He's not that old, but he's done a lot of drugs. I didn't even know he had a heart attack. I didn't know all these things. He, he was drinking. I didn't know all these things. I knew he was on drugs, but I didn't know he had a heart attack until he told me when we were at the mini repast. We really didn't have a repast. We just ate some food over at Deshaun's house. It was me, Deshaun, and my cousin, um, Nisi. I'm going to call her Nisi. So when my aunt asked him to come get the food, she had a tray of barbecue chicken, I think a tray of jerk chicken, a tray of macaroni and tuna, and a, um, a, a cake, a, 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 like a half of a sheet cake that she had made because my aunt's a damn good cook. It was four big trays. And I saw my uncle from out the screen window struggling because he has a bad leg and a bad knee. Now, he's only 63 years old. But I remember him in his 30s being strong and, you know, uh, being an asshole towards me my entire uh, childhood and teenage years until I moved out. I remember him, you know, being this big, strong, you know, asshole. But now that's not the case anymore. So I looked out the, the, the screen. He could barely pick up the trays. So I stuck my head out and I said, do you need me to get those for you? And he said, yeah, he could. He, he needed me to get them. He needed me to get them with my big strong self, child, that ain't got no fucking health problems. So I got all four of those heavy trays and took them in the house. Then he sat down and said to me, his son Deshaun and his and his daughter um, Nisi. Now, don't be confused. Nisi, his daughter Nisi, is with another woman. That's not Jane's daughter, okay? But she knew Jane, of course. So, Nisi, he was. We were all sitting down in the living room at Jane's and Deshaun's house, and my uncle said, "You know, I'm going to have to get together with all of you." With, you know, he was saying, I'm going to have to get together with you two, with you all to, to, so we can go over, what, you know, the arrangements and what I'm going to leave you all if something happens to me. And he pointed to me, too. And I was like, leave me something? I was like, I don't, I don't want, I was thinking in my mind, I don't want your money. I don't, I don't, I don't like when people leave me uh, money and stuff. I don't like that. I, I know I know what y'all gonna say. Oh, Seer, are you crazy? Maybe I am, but I don't want your money. But I didn't say anything. So I told my mother when I got home, I said, Do you know that your brother talking about leaving me something when he when he dies? She said, Seer, shut up. Let him leave you something. That is him saying I'm sorry for that's his half assed way of saying I'm sorry. Although that doesn't take away, I, I really don't have any regret, regrets because I've had a good life, you know, for the most part. Yeah, I've had some struggles and shit like that in my life, but that's all part of the human experience. That's all part of lessons and blessings. And because of the lessons, I was able to see and get to the blessings. I live in a one bedroom apartment. Okay? With my fucking husband. To me, this is heaven. There are people living in five and six bedroom motherfucking houses. And they're fucking miserable. They're tormented in their minds. I'm not. I sleep good at night. I don't have no issues sleeping. When I sleep, I dream because I'm a dreamer. And... I was just so overwhelmed when I came home after Jane's services, 
after seeing my family that I had not seen in a long time. Because as I was, as I was saying earlier, I'm the nucleus. I'm the nucleus. I'm that one. I am that one. And that's what that showed me that I am that one. You know, it's always the power of, it's always one person in the family who is the most conscious. And it just so happens that it's a gay guy that is the most conscious in this fucking family. So through all of the hurt and the, and the disappointment and the abuse and the misuse, This is where we're at now. I've reached my crown. I'm sitting on the throne. When people talk about the throne of Christ, they're really talking about the crown chakra and beyond. Anything, the crown chakra and beyond, that's the throne. I'm sitting on my throne. And it's not looking down at other people. But it's had, what this is all about is having compassion, even for those people that have hurt you. And what I felt in my heart after, that, after Jane's services, I felt compassion for the people that hurt me. I don't want to erase what they did. I don't want to forget it, per se. I'm not saying that what they did was right. But I have compassion now. And that is the only way you can truly heal. Is by having compassion. Even for those people who have hurt you the most. And that is what that taught me. Compassion is different from forgiveness. You don't have to forgive. Compassion is when you're really alleviating yourself of all of that hatred and all of that toxicity that comes with those negative emotions. And you don't ever take yourself for granted again. You don't ever do that. And that is what I felt. I felt compassion. Because now when I look at them, I'm like Betty Davis at the end of whatever happened to baby Jane. You mean to tell me all this time we could have been friends. And I know a lot of people may not know. I know some gay guys probably would know. But, you know, at the end of whatever happened to baby Jane. When Joan Crawford's character, Blanche, told her sister Betty Davis, I didn't you didn't cripple me. I crippled myself. I made you live your entire life thinking that you did something to me. I made you waste your entire life in guilt and misery taking care of me. When I was the one who did this shit to myself, that was a major symb symbology. That was a major symbol right there. But by the time she told her it was too late because Joan Crawford's character, Blanche, was dying on the beach. And Betty Davis's character, uh, Jane, said, you mean all this time we could have been friends. All of this beefing that we've been doing was so unnecessary. All of this time we could have been friends. And that is kind of how I felt. So this is a victory for me. This is a victory for me and it's a victory for anybody out there who's listening to this and you're going through the same thing or you are going to go through the same thing because 2022 give you my own law with people. I, I don't like calling it no psychic prediction and all that old bullshit, but just my energetic read 2022 is going to be the year of. You mean all this time we could have been friends. Meaning, it's going to be a year of dark reflections and a lot of people are going to be doing a lot of darker shadow work. 
Because we're in the sixth dimension right now. And the sixth dimension deals with, a, a, a large part of the sixth dimension deals with darker shadow work, self-realizations, communication, honesty, and looking at yourself as you are and not how people perceive you. 2022 is going to be the year of compassion for self, self-healing, and fuck everybody else. And I don't mean fuck everybody else in the sense of being an asshole. I mean fuck everybody else and focus on your own inner verse. And those dark places that need light, you shed light on them. So you can do your shadow work. 2022 is going to be the year of the shadow stepping out. Are you being led by your shadow or are you being led by your illusion? Because the shadow is really the truth. The illusion is just the motherfucking illusion. Anyway, I just wanted to let you all know what's been going on with me and giving you updates. And let me go ahead and start cooking my dinner for my man, child. Um... And that's really about it. And, and, and you know, just just on a little side note to you gay boys out there that want to keep want to keep your man home, cook him a good meal every now and then. I'm talking to the gay boys. I don't have to talk to women like but any of you gay boys out there, black gay boys, cook your man a, a meal, cook him a decent meal. If you don't know how to cook, most of us as gay boys, we should know how to cook. Right. You know what I mean? And I'm not talking about ordering no goddamn DoorDash and pretending like you cooked it. You know what I mean? Get your ass in that motherfucking kitchen. Get your, get your hands dirty like I'm about to go do. Okay? Cook your man a motherfucking meal. He always come back to you. The, the Women will tell you that. Women will tell you that. They will tell you that. Um, I'm going to come back through and do a video about... Um, I'm going to get some more energy from it and some more information. But I really want to talk about the first black woman potentially being nominated to sit on the, on the Supreme Court. That is something that really, really I want to talk about. If I if I if the energy flows correctly, then I'll talk about it. If not, mm, kaput with that. But anyway, this is the year of compassion, healing self-reflection and the year of the shadow the year of the shadow that the shadow is busting out and things are breaking down the year of breakdowns and breakthroughs that's all i really have to say thank you